Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 17.2 Beta 2. iOS 17.2 Beta 2 released today to developers and public beta testers, probably by the time you're watching this video, if not, probably tomorrow. Now, if you want to jump to any specific features or maybe bug fixes or more, be sure to check out the links in the description for the chapters. Now, along with this, Apple also released a bunch of different updates, such as iPadOS 17.2 Beta 2, watchOS 10.2 beta 2 and many others. Now, as far as the overall size, you can see here that we have 748.8 megabytes. That's on my 15 pro max. It was about the same size on all the other devices here. Now let's take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go down to general, then about, as you can see, the build number is 21 C 5040 G. This latest update adds new features and changes and also adds a modem update, which will hopefully help with overall connectivity. We'll have to check that in a few days though. Now, as far as new features, the first thing has to do with the camera. If we scroll down to our camera settings, so we'll scroll all the way down, go into camera. And if we go under formats within formats, there's a new option for spatial video for Apple vision pro. It says record spatial video with remarkable depth for viewing in the photos app on Apple vision pro for best results. Keep iPhone in landscape orientation and stable while recording video is recorded at 30 frames per second at 1080p. A minute of spatial video is approximately 130 megabytes. So if you have this enabled and you go into your camera app and you're within the video setting, you'll actually have a new icon here for spatial video. If we enable this, it actually asks us to turn it to landscape mode if we're in portrait. So if we rotate this and then hit record, it says move farther away. So I'm barely at the distance that we want here, but while we're recording, we have a new icon there as well. And if we stop the recording, and try to go into the video. It does play here and you'll see some of my notes there at the top, but it is playing without a problem, but it's also spatial video as well. That will be playable on Apple vision pro. Also, if you're watching a spatial video, it will let you know that in the upper left. Additionally, they've updated Siri to let you know what your altitude is. You can ask it and it should tell you what's my current altitude. It says you're about 639 feet above sea level. Additionally, you can ask Siri what your ETA is if you're using it for directions. So maybe you want to set it to somewhere else. We'll set it to the Apple store. So if I have directions set, what is my ETA? You should arrive in about 40 minutes. And it knows how far it is away from my destination. Some of those Siri features may have worked for you in beta one as well. However, the elevation one or altitude didn't work for me until I asked a couple different times. Now, if we go into settings and then go back and we go under general this time within general, they've now put coverage here. It was in a different place before. So if we go into coverage, we can see the coverage of all our different devices, whether it's expired or we currently have a warranty on it, such as Apple care plus on the iPhone 15 pro max. Also, if we go into the TV app, Within TV, they've updated this for some people in the bottom here. You've got the Apple TV plus icon that's been updated. Additionally, some people are seeing 3d movies within Apple TV as well. Specifically, some people were seeing it under Jurassic world dominion and Kung Fu Panda three, but I'm not seeing it at all. Maybe they removed it for now. Also within settings, if we go down to privacy and security and then scroll down, you'll see sensitive content warning. This helps you block different things that may be explicit images, whether you want to do that for yourself or children, it will look at things such as airdrop contacts, messages, and video messages. And with iOS 17.2, it looks like it's expanding in to contacts with the actual contact cards. So if there's maybe an explicit image there, it will blur that out in case you don't want to see that first, it will do that for your children and more. So you can enable this or disable it. It's up to you. Also, if we go into messages and maybe someone replied to us in a message, we can press and hold. And some people are seeing the option to speak here again. So that was a feature we had before. It looks like it's returned for some users. Let me know if you're seeing it as well. The first time you go back into news after installing this update, you'll have a new splash screen that says, welcome to Apple news, tap continue. And it loads. I'm not sure why that pops up, but that's something that's new there. Additionally, if we go into the app store, the Apple music for artists app was updated today. And if we scroll down, you can see the latest version that was released three hours ago, at least at the time of filming this video, it says view how many listeners you have in real time, which songs they're playing the most and minute by minute, look at listener activity over the last 48 hours. So if you have music within Apple music, you can see some of your analytics here a little bit more. 
Now, additionally, if we go into the release notes, there's some fixes here as well as bugs that are still remaining. So if we go into feedback, if we go into the latest notes and I'll place those in the description as well, if you want to check those out, you'll see a bunch of resolved issues and known issues. But if we continue to scroll down, you'll see one in particular, I thought stood out for personal hotspot. It says they fixed an issue where certain Android devices might not be able to connect to iPhone personal hotspot due to a known issue with older Android network stack code. So that's been resolved. If you're trying to connect an Android device to your device as well. So that's something that's been fixed as well as a bunch of other small fixes for developers. Some are larger than others, but one thing that they've fixed that I'm really happy about is in the journaling app. Our suggestions are now working properly, whether that's recents with music or just photos and more before I would go into this and it would just say the word suggestions and nothing would show. So that's something they've been updated with. And then we can tap here and add these to the journal. We can allow it to use music songs on repeat it says do you appreciate something different each time you hear these songs and you can write about it so all of the suggestions seem to be fixed this time around one thing that's not fixed though is still the notification bug so you'll see it just jumps in something we keep seeing over and over Additionally, my weather widget says it's unavailable for some reason. I have all of the permissions allowed, but when I go into weather, it works. But when I go back to the home screen, it's not working for me. Now it's working. So before I tried this over and over and it seems to be a bit of a bug, but they should have fixed that in the previous update. Now we don't know if this update brings the charging fix for the BMW issue when you're wireless charging or other cars or anything from iOS 17.1.1. It probably does, but we don't know that 100%. We also know iOS 17.2 is supposed to fix the issue with Wi-Fi, and hopefully that's resolved, but we'll have to check that out in a few days with the follow-up video as well. Also, the keyboard bug is still an issue for some where it just doesn't show up. It seems to be working fine in this beta so far, but before it wasn't for some people. Another thing I wanted to mention briefly is that Apple is working on iOS 18 and according to Mark Gurman, they finished the first round of betas and there were a lot of bugs. So they've paused work to focus on bugs this time around. Now we've heard this with iOS 17 before, but we didn't really get any confirmation from any leakers that that's exactly what they're doing. And it seems this time around Apple's focusing on making sure it's more stable than before. Hopefully that carries through to the final release next year in September. Now, as far as overall performance so far, it's been performing fine. I've had no slowdowns whatsoever, no stuttering, just using this regularly right now. But again, this will take a few days to measure that and see what it's like. It seems to be nice and smooth and fast, and I would expect the same on older devices as well, whether that's an iPhone 11, scrolling is nice and fast and everything else, just like you would expect. ProMotion seems to be what you would expect as far as that goes as well. Heat in general is normal as well. It's not overly hot, although you do need to give it a couple days to process things in the background. It feels a little warm to the touch, but barely warm at all, and it seems to be what you would expect there as far as heat. Nothing is overheating. We're not having a burning hot back of the phone it's much better than it was before as far as battery life we'll go into settings if we go back into general and then about you'll see we have 38 cycles of the battery that's not bad considering i've been using it full time with the exception of testing two other phones and if we go down to battery and battery health you'll see we're still at 100 percent if we go over to the battery life this has actually been pretty good for me it's been getting me through a day but one thing we found you'll see i have screen active time of eight hours and one minutes of screen active time, two hours and five minutes of screen idle time. I've used a little over 50% of my battery, 48% according to the battery in the upper right, and it's gotten me eight hours. That's because it's counting standby mode as well. So if you turn standby mode off, we found it won't count that and you'll actually have reasonable numbers. Hopefully they split this up in the future, but you'll see that the day before. So it goes down to about four hours with about 60% usage or so. So it's been getting me through the day, 50% at the end of the day, but it's still not phenomenal for me yet. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17.2 beta two, if you're on beta one, I would absolutely install it, update it, and then provide feedback as needed if you're having issues. However, if you're on iOS 17.1.1, I would stick with that for a while if you're worried about bugs or battery life. Give it a few days, see how it is. Beta two is likely to have some bugs, and that's why we have the feedback app. So I would hold off, I'll talk about it on the weekend as far as how it's going overall.
Now, as far as iOS 17.2 beta 3's release date, well, we expect a final release of this update probably in December, probably around the week of December 13th, but with the betas, we could expect that as soon as either next week or the week after. We're not sure if we're still on a two week cycle. Hopefully it's next week and we get a few more, but it's likely a couple weeks out until after beta three. So we'll have to wait and see as far as that goes. We could also get an iOS 17.1.2 in between sometime if Apple has additional bugs they need to fix. They haven't mentioned anything as to whether or not the iPhone is fixed as far as rebooting at night. When it comes to benchmarks, I did run those. I ran those twice and it's actually pretty good. 2,922 for single core, 7,240 for multi-core. If we take a look at the history, you'll see again, I ran that twice. It's higher than what we had with beta one. So definitely a little bit better. You'll see iOS 17.2 beta one here with 2,904 compared to 2,922. Again, 7,240 for multi-core, 7,130 on the older beta. So it's a little bit better and I I just ran it. So that's a good sign. It seems to be performing as you would expect. Now, if you've found anything else in iOS 17.2 beta two, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And I'll link this wallpaper in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.